The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. Today, we'll be having a subject known as law. And I will be your law teacher. My name, Nalova Debbie Johnson, and I'll be your law teacher. Before we begin, I would like us to know our class and those that are expected to attend this lesson, this particular subject. This is from five, from five law for all commercial options, meaning if you are doing accounting, you are doing marketing, you are doing uh, management, you are doing SAC, H-E, you are meant to be in this class and you are welcome. What are we going to be looking at in our program for the entire year? We have a summary of all we'll be expected to do before the year runs out. First, we are going to be looking at a general presentation of the syllabus. What does the subject law contain? What are we expected to go through by the end of this academic year? Then we're looking at, at the objectives. What are our objectives? What is expected of us? What is expected of you as students of law to have acquired by the end of this subject, by the end of this academic year? And finally, we'll look at the prerequisites for you to study law. What is expected for you to come with, to have as intellectual baggage to attend this class of law from five? Let's hit the road. We are beginning with our, the general presentation of the syllabus. What are some of the topics? What are the topics we'll be looking at? These topics are the ones that will motivate you to attend this class, motivate you to come more for more and to register this subject. Now, what are some of those topics? First, we'll start with introduction to law. It's always good to have a base to know where we come from, but most of that is revision. We are going to be looking at the stru court structure in Cameroon. We'll be looking at judicial officers in Cameroon. We'll be looking at law of contracts, marriage, contract of employment, and finally, criminal law. These are the topics that we should run through before the end of the academic year. What are the objectives? What do we hope to attain? What do I hope you as students would have attained or have obtained by the end of this, uh, by the end of this lesson or by the end of this subject, the end of the academic year? First, I expect that by the end of this academic year, you students should be able to identify basic notions of law and their importance in society. You should be able to identify the role played by the judicial arm of government through its court structures. We have different arms of government. We have the executive, we have the judiciary, and we have the administration. Now, in the judiciary, what are their duties and how do they perform these duties? Through whom? That is the courts. We are going to be looking at all of that. You should also be able to identify and draft contractual relationships, including employment contracts, and to know the consequences of their breach. You should be able to identify different categories of crimes and their sanctions. That is what you should know by the end of this Form 5 class. That is what you should be equipped with by the end of this Form 5 class. Remember, a few years back, this particular subject was termed law and government. But that has changed. 
there is a part of that subject that has been left out, which is government. So now, if you hear law and government somewhere, correct the person. You now do law. What are you expected to know as a student in Form 5 law class? What is it that you already know? You already know. You are able to identify labor organizations, the different labor organizations, the international and those that are local within our country. You are able to define labor contracts, the different type of, type of labor contracts, you can define each and every one of them. You know the rights and duties of workers and employers under labor contracts. Those are things you have studied in Form 4, Form 3, Form 2, before now. Our first topic is going to be on introduction to law. This topic has been divided into two basic lessons. What are these lessons? We have our first lesson, definition and classification of laws. And our second lesson, sources of law. Our first lesson to begin with, as already seen, is on definition and classification of law. How are we going to proceed? What is our plan? We are going to begin by looking at the outcome, the expected outcome. What are we expected to know by the end of this particular lesson? What are we expected to come to this lesson with? What is the knowledge we are supposed to have acquired before coming to this lesson? That is our previous knowledge. We are going to be discovering our lesson of today and then shooting up with our learning activities. What does our learning, our lesson of today contain? It contains definitions, it contains classifications, it contains different groups. We are going to be looking at all of that within our learning activities. After which, we are going to be going on to application exercises. These application exercises are meant to verify if we have only been attentive throughout this lesson, if we have been listening and following up, or if we have been sleeping. If we are able to answer the questions in application exercise, it therefore means our lesson has been perfectly assimilated. And as always, I will give you a gift to go home with, which is actually an assignment, a consolidation exercise to do at home, to revise what we have done in class and to keep us abreast, preparing us for our next lesson. We are expected, by the end of this lesson, our expected outcome of the lesson, we are expected that by the end of this lesson, you as the students of Form 5 law class should be able to define law. You should be able to state the classifications of law, the main classifications of law. You should be able to differentiate between the different classes of laws. That is what you are expected to do, to be able to do by the end of this class. Where are we coming from? Where are you coming from? What do you already know? You should already know, you should already be able to identify, do an identification of labor organizations. The various labor organizations that exist in Cameroon and internationally. That you saw in Form 4, Form 3, Form 2. They should also be able to, you should be able to do an identification and definition of types of labor contracts. The different types of labor contracts, the main type and the other types. You should be able to identify them and define them. You should be able to identify different professional risks. That is where we are coming from. Those are things you saw in Form 3, Form 4. So those are things you already know. Into our lesson proper. Where are we going to? Now, I have a little story for you. From the story, I expect that you'll be able to give me an answer that will project us into our lesson of today. What is my story? Mr. Fru was recruited as a watchman in one of the CDC plantation stores in Tiko. He broke into the store and made away with two computers. Which branch of the law can handle such cases? I repeat again. Mr. Fru was recruited as a watchman in one of the CDC plantation stores in Tiko. He broke into the store and made away with two computers. Which branch of the law can handle such cases? I would expect your answer to be criminal law. And it is going to be criminal law because of dealing with what? Theft. 
Stealing is a crime, it's an offense. Now, this means that the law is divided into classes, into groups, meaning that the law has different categories. What are the classifications that we are going to be looking at? Before we get there, we need to begin from the beginning. When a child is of age, that child does not just stand up and walk. If that child does, I go to run away. We must start from somewhere. The baby starts from creeping, lying on his belly, creeping, before walking, standing and then walking. So let's start from definition of law. What is law? Law refers to the rules and regulations generally accepted by all, in, by all imposed by the state and backed by sanctions. Again, rules and regulations generally accepted by all imposed by the state and backed by sanctions. That is the law. This law has certain aspects of it that make it a law. We are going to look at the characteristics of rules and regulations that make it law. What makes a law different from rules and regulations? What makes them different? There are certain aspects that must be present. Characteristics of law. Law must be drawn up by a legislative organ of the state. A law must be made by the arm of the state that is meant to make laws. Even if they are not made directly by them, they mu it must be approved by this legislative arm for it to be passed into law. If it is not made by them, it is simply a rule or a regulation. If it is passed by the parliament, the legislative organ of a state, then it is referred to as a law. Secondly, laws are imposed. Laws are obligatory. Laws are a must. It is not something you do when you feel like, or something you engage in when it suits you. No, laws are meant to be obeyed. It's an obligation to obey them. If it's a rule that you can, or you cannot, or you may, or you may not do, that isn't a law. A law is imposed, it is obligatory. That characteristic of a law is that everybody is in court before the law. The law is applicable to everyone at the same level, at the same time, in the same way. It doesn't favor some people and discriminate against others. Then that is not a law. For example, we have, we are told not to steal. In Cameroon, stealing is an offense, a criminal offense. Whether you steal a goat, whether you steal a piece of bread, a loaf of bread, whether you steal a computer, whether you steal a car, whether you steal using the computer virtually, all is referred to as stealing. It is for everyone, no matter at what level, in what way, in what form you do it. So long as you obtain someone else's property without their permission, it's referred to as stealing. That means the law is equal. It makes, makes everybody equal before the law. Law guides human conduct. Laws are meant to guide the way we behave. They are meant to tell us how to behave. Without laws, there will be no uh, order in society. We all know that when you stand on the road, whether driving or moving, if you see a zebra crossing on the road, who has priority at the zebra crossing? It is a pedestrian, not a vehicle. That simply, that is a, 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 a law that guides the way we behave. So as a driver, when you see a zebra crossing ahead of you, you slow down because there may be a pedestrian who wants to cross. Someone who is moving along the road, referred to as a pedestrian, when he sees a zebra crossing, he knows that is where he's permitted to cross the road. So it guides our behavior. Laws must be accepted by a majority. The law should be in conformity, that a majority of the people should be in accordance with the law, should agree with the law being passed. Law must not be repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. For a law to be good, it must not go against natural justice. It must not be uh, unfair. It must not go against our good conscience. For example, it is, if a law comes out that a particular uh, tribe, a particular group of people are meant to be slaves of others, that is against natural justice. Because when God created man and woman, he never said there will be a particular race that is going to be subjected to another one. So any law that is making a particular tribe, race, or people subject to another one 
it is a law repugnant or against natural justice, equity, and good conscience. Laws must be clear. They must not be ambiguous. They must not be able to, subject to confusion. You should not be able to, to not to be able to determine whether it is an offense or not an offense. The law should be straightforward and clear. If in school you have a regulation that states that if you are caught eating in class, you should work eight hours of punishment. The law says if you are caught eating in class. Now, is drinking eating? So the teacher catches you drinking yogurt. Is that eating? It's not eating. The law is clear. If you're eating bread, anything that requires your jaws to move, your, for you to masticate, that is eating. The law is clear. So if you're caught drinking juice, drinking water in class, the teacher cannot punish you with eight days punishment or eight hours of punishment because the law is clear. It is eating and not drinking. That said, we have looked at the characteristics of law. What are the classes? How do we classify laws? What are the classification that are available or in which we put, what are the classes in which or groups in which we put laws in our country can rule? We have basically four main classes of laws. We have private and public law, municipal and public international law, substantive and procedural law, civil and criminal law. Those are the four groups I will go again. Private and public law, municipal and public international law, substantive and procedural law, criminal and civil law. Those are our four main groups. Now we are going to proceed gently. The first group, private and public law. What is private law? This is law which deals with the relationship between individuals and their properties. Any law that handles the relationship between one individual and another, or that handles the relationship between an individual and his property, that is referred to as private law. Such laws we have land law, law of contract, family law. Family law, for example, we have marriage. Marriage is a union between one man and one woman. Those are two individuals. That is private law. We have contract law. We enter into a contract for the supply of goods with another person. One is the buyer and one is the seller. These are two individuals who have a relationship with one or another. You also have land law where you you have a relationship with your property. How can you be the owner of a piece of land? What does the law state? That is land law. That is what we refer to as private law. Public law. This is one class. Private law and public law. What is public law as opposed to private law? Public law is a set of rules that govern the states and individuals or actions of people working in, working in general interest. This is a law that governs the relationship between individuals and the state. Remember, private law relates, organizes the relationship between individuals, one to another individual. Public law organizes the relationship or deals with the relationship between individuals and the state or amongst people who work for general interests, who work for the state, or who work for the good of everyone else. What are some of those laws that fall under public law? We have constitutional law. We have administrative law and we have criminal law. Any offense committed by an individual against another individual is actually against the state of Cameroon. If you, 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 you steal someone's property, you have stolen another person's property, of course, but you have gone against the state. You have affected the state. The state has a right to bring an action against you. That's why in criminal proceedings, if you go to court, you hear the people versus, meaning the people of Cameroon versus this individual for this offense. It is not one individual against another. Our second group, municipal and public international law. That's our second group. What is municipal law? Municipal law are laws, rules and regulations which operate within a state. All the laws that have effect or have power only within a particular state are referred to as municipal laws. I said within a state or within a country. I did not talk about a region. We go here of municipality. We start thinking of males and regions. No. I come again. Municipal laws are laws which operate within a state or a country. Those laws have effect only within that state or within that country. Once out of that country, that law does not apply. For example, we have the Cameroon Labor Code, 
We have the Cameroon Penal Code. We have the Cameroon Constitution. The Cameroon is in front of tell me that what? If those laws are valid and operational, have effect only within the state of Cameroon. Out of Cameroon, those laws do not have any effect. Now, we have public international law as opposed to municipal law. This two are in one group. We have municipal law as opposed to public international law. What is public international law? These are laws that govern the relationship among states. These are laws that regulate relationships between one state and another state. For example, we have the OHADA Treaty. The OHADA Treaty is a new business law that came up because of the difficulties traders had in dealing with traders or business people of other countries. Because in that case, which law is going to apply? A Cameroonian doing trade with another person in Chad, a Chadian. Now, we have the Chadian, we have the Cameroonian. They want to do business together. In the event of a breach, in the event of a problem, which law applies? Is it the Chadian law or is it the Cameroonian law? There was a problem. That is why we have public international laws. These are laws which operate basically only in the relationship between states. Like our other treaty, it regulates the business relationships between member states. All those who are members of the Wahada, all the laws of the Wahada apply to them. We have our third group, substantive and procedural law. Substantive law governs how members of a society are to behave. For example, the Cameroon Labor Code, the Uniform Act on Commercial Companies and Economic Interest, interest Groups. Those are just laws, the written form, the codes. That is what we refer to as substantive law, as opposed to procedural law. The procedural law deals with the procedure used to follow up or initiate a matter. The procedural laws give you the step-by-step -step process to follow in order to bring about or to ensure that a particular code, a substantive law, is brought into effect. We have, for example, the civil status ordinance. In a civil status ordinance, you want a birth certificate. How do you establish a birth certificate? The civil status ordinance will give you the procedure. You have the criminal procedure code. You want to bring a case in criminal law. How do you go about it? Who do you begin with? Where do you go to? What is the duration you have? All of that is provided in the Criminal Procedure Code. And our last group or last class is Civil and Criminal Law. What is civil law? Civil law is concerned with the rights and duties of citizens towards each other. The civil law will, contain, will, con will include any law that has to do with the rights and duties of citizens towards each other. For example, our Civil Status Ordinance has to do with the relationship between individuals. Our family law has to do with the relationship between the family, husband and wife, change of name, change of status, all of that. It's just a laws that deal with individuals, their rights towards one another. As opposed to the criminal law, which handles all wrongdoings or offenses against the state. The criminal laws will involve all uh, laws that have to do with wrongdoings against the state. For example, our Cameroon Penal Code. So we have gone through our four classes, our four groups. We have seen the four groups into which laws can be classified. We have, as already seen, we have the first group, which is our private and public law. Our second group, municipal as opposed to public international law. Our third group, substantive as opposed to procedural law. And finally, civil and criminal law. To find out if we've understood the lesson of today, if we've mastered it properly, as I said before, we are going to do some exercises, questions for us to answer. First question, define law. That was our beginning. That was our first point, our first stop. Define law. Law can be defined as rules and regulations governing the behavior and attitudes of persons in a society passed by a legislative body, interpreted and applied by courts, and backed by sanctions. Now, you will tell me that, Madam, this definition you are giving us is not what you gave us at the beginning. Remember, I gave a summary definition at the beginning. Here we have put in the characteristics we examined of a law to make it rules and regulations, 
governing the behavior and attitudes of persons in a society, passed by a legislative body, interpreted and applied by courts, and backed by sanctions. Question two, which of the following laws fall under private law? Remember the classifications we had. I gave you examples under each classification. Now, which of the following laws will fall under private law? Is it A, administrative law, B, land law, C, constitutional law, D, contract law? Which of them? Contract law. Contract law will fall under private law because it deals with the rights and duties of one individual towards another. Question three. A law which lists the steps to be taken and durations for a legal action or document to be established is known as a law which lists the steps to be taken and durations for a legal action or document to be established will fall under which group, which class of laws? Remember we had four. Under which class, which of these particular classes will it fall? If your answer is procedural law, you're right. Remember we said procedural law as opposed to substantive law. Procedural law gives a process, gives a duration to, take a, to bring an action or to establish a document or to ensure that the substantive law is put in effect. So if your answer is procedural law, you are on point. Question four. State at least two examples of the following classes of laws. A, private law. B, municipal law. Two examples of each. Private law as examples, we have family law and contract law. Remember, under our lessons, I give you examples of laws that can follow that. Private law deals with law, with any law that deals with the rights and duties of individuals towards another. We have family law, we have contract law. Other municipal law, examples are the Cameroon Labor Code, the Cameroon Penal Code. Remember, Cameroon in front means that they are applied only within the state of Cameroon. That is why they are municipal laws, as opposed to public international laws, which are applied between states. I think we can congratulate ourselves if we had all our answers correct. Means we have understood our lesson of today, and we can be proud to say that we have attended our first law class, and we are up to date. As always, we'll be moving home with a consolidation exercise, something to help us revise our lesson. Now, our question is, answer the following statements with yes or no. So at the end of each statement, you put a yes or a no, depending on your answer. What are those statements? First, civil law is concerned with the rights and duties of citizens towards each other. Yes or no? Put your correct answer. Everybody is not equal before the law. Yes or no? Put your answer. Law refers to the set of rules and regulations by which a state is governed. Yes or no? Put your answer. I'll take the questions again, the statements again. Civil law is governed, is concerned, excuse me, civil law is concerned with the rights and duties of citizens towards each other. Yes or no? You put your answer depending on what you've understood from this statement. Everybody is not equal before the law. Does the law consider some people more important than others? Yes or no? Law refers to the set of rules and regulations by which a state is governed. Yes or no? Or do you think that rules and regulations are the things used to punish people? If you think so, then that answer should be no. If you don't think so, then your answer should be yes. From your lesson of today, this exercise, if you do it, it would have enabled you to revise all that we've seen today. Having come to the end of our lesson of today, I would want to appreciate because I want to believe that we have understood and attained our objectives. We've been able to define law, we've been able to look at the classes into which the laws are divided, and to be able to distinguish which law belongs into which class. From then on, our next lesson is going to be looking at sources of law. Una tege si ma tege yob, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne injubya yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la 
kiri wate gendong Esa tina bia dinkido Mane tambia ninya nejo bia yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya nejo bia yen